Juan, you have gotten your summary statement back and the critiques were not what you were hoping for. So how do you actually get your resubmission funded? That's what we are talking about today. If you're new around here, I'm Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant and my team and I help early career researchers get funded at NIH. So today we're going to be talking about two different scenarios, right? When it comes to your R01, either your previous R01 was not discussed or it was discussed. And the reason that we need to talk about these differently is there are slightly different considerations for each of those scenarios, okay? But for each of those scenarios, we're going to talk about what to look for in the summary statement and factors to consider for your resubmission. So let's get started with scenario number one. Your R01 was not discussed. So generally speaking, this is an indication that there's a major flaw in the proposal or that there was a problem with strategic alignment or framing of your grant. In other words, you know, it, it might have gone to the wrong study section or it might have been put in front of reviewers who just really didn't get it because their expertise was not aligned properly with uh, what you were speaking to, what you were proposing. Okay, so that's sort of the general sort of overview of, um, of, of your R01 not being discussed. So let's talk a little bit more about what we need to consider for this scenario. The number one thing is that this is not the end of the world, okay? It happens a lot, right? Um, and the only reason that you would really need to worry here is that if you've submitted a, a variation on this grant multiple times and it's never been discussed, that's, that's a sign to start worrying. But if this is your first uh, kick at the can with this particular uh, idea, or even your second attempt, you're you're fine, um, but there are definitely things that you can do to put yourself in a much stronger position for your resubmission, okay? So what you want to look for in your summary statement, you want to focus on the main strengths and weaknesses for each of the scoring criteria, okay? So what did the reviewers focus on? What worked for them and what didn't work for them, okay? Where were the reviewers confused? And this one is really, really important. So where did they not have the information or the justification that they needed? So anytime a reviewer says that they can't find something or something isn't clear, that is a grantsmanship issue. And we tend to see this a lot more in triaged applications and grants that weren't discussed, more so than we see it in um, applications that were scored and discussed. So this is something to pay really close attention to. Anytime you see language in your summary statement where a reviewer is saying, you know, this this piece of information was missing or it wasn't clear, you know, what the applicant was trying to do here, that type of language is a sign of some major errors in grantsmanship. And those are the ones that you really need to pay attention to in your resubmission. Okay, so what do you actually need to consider? What are the factors you actually need to consider in your resubmission? So first of all, are you submitting an A0 or an A1? Are you kind of going back to the drawing board or you are, are you actually resubmitting your application? And this is a big decision when your grant isn't discussed, right? And one of the major considerations here is, are you substantially changing the project based on the critiques? And if you are substantially changing the project, that is more in line with a new application rather than a resubmission, right? But the other thing that you need to think about here when it comes to a grant that was not discussed is um, how big a leap you're trying to make from um, not discussed to funded, right? That's, that's a huge leap and pretty unlikely. Um, and so what do you want to sort of have you... What, what do you want to have follow you um, throughout this application, right? Because of course, if you're submitting an A1, you're submitting an introduction to the resubmission and you have to respond to all of those critiques. And that of course is gonna follow this particular application through. Whereas an A0, um, even though you're able to use the critiques that you got from your previous submission, um, it's still kind of a clean slate in some ways, right? So that's another thing to think about when you are considering what you're going to do with uh, a previous R01 that wasn't discussed, okay? The other thing to consider here is 
as we talked about earlier, did it go to the right study section? Did this actually get in front of the reviewers who are most likely to get excited about your idea? And sometimes it, it doesn't, right? Sometimes it goes to the wrong group, uh, a group that is not sort of fully aligned with uh, your, your expertise or their expertise is not aligned with what you are proposing. Right. And again, you don't have full control over this, um, but you do have a lot of control in how you frame your application so that the Center for Scientific Review can make sure that it goes to the right study section. So that is actually uh, in your control and worth um, reconsidering and reviewing uh, to make tweaks around the, you know, the keywords that you're using and the, the way that you're framing the grant so that it does end up in the right study section. And of course, the, the bottom line here is that you actually need to think about that. You actually need to do some homework around where you want this to end up, which experts you want um, this to get in front of, and which is the best study section so that you can start framing your application in a way that will um, give yourself the best chance to end up there, okay? Um, the other really important factor to consider here is how much time are you going to need to address the critiques and write a strong resubmission? And again, what we see more often in grants that were not discussed is that everything was rushed the first time around, right? It was kind of thrown together at the last minute. Uh, it wasn't really thought through very well. And so what can you actually do next time to give yourself more time to really do the work to present a clear and persuasive application, okay? Of course, the other thing that's tied to that is what are you going to do to improve your grantsmanship to, again, make your application clearer and more persuasive for your reviewers? How are you going to anticipate and address those questions and objections that your reviewers are having, right? That is part of really strong grantsmanship. And remember too, finally, when it comes to factors to consider for uh, a grant that wasn't discussed, remember that because the grant wasn't discussed, you probably won't have a complete picture of the critiques uh, of your grant, right? You just have the critiques of each of those individual assigned reviewers. So it's possible that on your resubmission, uh, you will have a whole other set of uh, critiques that you need to address. So just be aware of that. At this stage, there really isn't a whole lot that you can do about that, aside from what we just talked about, right? Improving your grantsmanship, giving yourself more time, and really making sure that you are strategically aligned, okay? So let's move on now to scenario number two, which is that your R1 is discussed. So the, the sort of high level overview here is that this is a sign that your reviewers liked your grant, but they didn't love it. And so the question now is how do we get them to love it? Okay. So what you want to look for in the summary statement for a grant that is discussed. And I want to preface this by saying this is exactly what we do with our clients when we're working in the strategic grant review service with them. The very first thing that we do is we go through their summary statement with them line by line in a process we call a resubmission strategy session. And so what we look for in their summary statement, first of all, is we take a close look at the summary of the discussion, right? So what were the main strengths and weaknesses overall? And then we go through mostly the weaknesses in each of the individual scoring criteria. And we ask our PIs, do you agree or do you disagree? And either way, we get really useful information, okay? If the PI agrees with the critique, then we know that they're gonna be able to go off and make the required changes uh, to be more in line with what the reviewers are uh, critiquing or what they are suggesting, right? But if the PI disagrees, we also pay really close attention to that because they will provide a justification for why they're doing it the way they're doing it and why the reviewer is mistaken, right? Uh, sometimes in these conversations privately, uh, the language is a bit saltier than that. But of course, when we're writing our intro to the resubmission, uh, we, you know, we keep it very diplomatic, but that's fine. When you're talking to us, no big deal. You can be as salty and petty as you want to be. That's what we're there for. But 
like I said, when we are asking our PIs whether they disagree, it gives us really good information about why they made the choices that they made. And what's important to know about that is that that's what needs to be in the next iteration of the grant, right? That's what either needs to be in the intro to the resubmission page or embedded within the grant itself is a stronger justification for why you're doing it the way you're doing it. And you might actually even call out the suggestion uh, or the critique from uh, from a reviewer, not d directly, um, but you would sort of call out and say, well, another way to do it is this, but here's why we're not doing it that way, right? So you're, you're directly addressing and saying, yeah, we could do it that way, but here's why that's not going to work, or here's why we've chosen to do it this other way, right? So you are, you are getting um, more in depth with your justification for why you're doing it the way you're doing it, okay? So other things to look for um, when it comes to the summary statement. So usually if your grant was discussed, it's a sign that it did end up in the right study section, but not always. So that's one thing we always check with our PIs is whether, whether they think that it went to the right study section or whether we need to revisit that and sort of reframe things a little so it ends up somewhere else. Um, but that's really it for the summary statement. But of course, there's a lot there, right? There's a lot to do with that summary statement. Uh, and then factors to consider for your resubmission. So generally speaking, at this level, the changes to the approach are relatively minor. They're, they're relatively quick fixes, right? It's more about ensuring that you are explaining your idea clearly, succinctly, and persuasively. And so grantsmanship really comes into play in resubmissions, but it looks different than it does for grants that are discussed. Remember when we were talking about grants that aren't discussed, we are talking about grantsmanship in terms of errors in grantsmanship, right? There's missing information, missing justification. Um, in grants that aren't discussed, again, you're trying to avoid errors in grantsmanship so that your reviewers can actually understand what you're trying to accomplish. Right. But in grants that are discussed, you've usually done a decent job of getting your reviewers to understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And now what you're doing is trying to boost that excitement level right among your reviewers. You do that by clarifying and simplifying how you're communicating your idea and you're making sure that you are speaking directly to what your audience of reviewers finds compelling and exciting. And so when you're thinking about your resubmission for a grant that was discussed, what more can you do to clarify and simplify how you're communicating your idea? And how can you make sure that you're speaking directly to what your reviewers find cool and interesting and exciting about your research? Usually you can find some really good clues to that in your summary statement based on what your reviewers have, have talked about in terms of your strengths, right? So there's a lot you can do with your summary statement. All right, so if you found this helpful, we have a free resource library full of tools and resources to help you write a stronger NIH grant. And you can find the link to sign up for that free resource library right underneath this video in the video description. And if you want to work with us on a R01 resubmission, we would love to do that. We would love to work with you. And here's how that works. You can go to our application page, which again, there's a link for that in the video description and submit an application to work with us uh, in a future uh, cycle for our strategic review process. And if you qualify with your application, then we will have a conversation where we get to understand your research a little bit more and we talk about the strategic review process with you and uh, and get started. And so if you are interested in doing that, again, you can find more information about the strategic grant review process that we go through and a link to the application in the video description. That's it for this week. We'll see you next time.